In today's video, we are going to be testing ray tracing, path tracing, ray reconstruction, DLSS, and NVIDIA's frame generation in four games on an 8GB variant of RTX 4060 Ti at 1080p resolution. As for the other parts, I'll be using a B760 motherboard with an i5-12400 and 32GB of DDR4 RAM. Now, of course I would have loved to have an i9 on a Z790 chipset with DDR5 RAM instead, but things are kinda pricey nowadays, so whatever we have, we'll just have to do for now. Besides, this i5 is pretty capable, and I think it'll be enough to let this 4060 Ti do most of its job without any bottlenecks. So why don't we just head over to the benchmarks and see what this GPU can actually do. Let's begin with Cyberpunk. In this game, we'll be using the built-in benchmarking tool so that we can compare all of our results to the same test. Let's max out every single setting here and turn ray tracing on. As we see, we are struggling to even achieve 60 FPS. But thankfully, we have a variety of features that we can use to fix that, such as DLSS 3.5 or NVIDIA's frame generation. Unlike AMD's version of frame gen, NVIDIA's one has no problems at all with generating extra frames if your original FPS is below 60. After enabling these two features, the average FPS rose by 30 in both cases. The game also became a lot more playable and much smoother. And in case you wanna have even more FPS than this, you can always enable both features at once and you'll end up with nearly triple the amount of FPS than what you are getting without them. But what about path tracing? Can we still achieve 60 plus FPS while having it enabled as well? Without any sort of upscaling or frame generation, we can't even go above 30 FPS. On top of that, I also started noticing some frame drops and micro stutters, which is to be expected because 8 gigs of VRAM is not enough for these kind of settings. Now since our FPS was so low, neither the frame generation or the LSS were able to get it up to 60, but thanks to the combination of the two, we managed to get around 80 FPS on average. And by the way, we had the LSS set to quality. If you set it to balanced or performance, you're gonna get even more FPS. Balanced DLSS alone should be able to give you 60-ish FPS with both ray tracing and path tracing enabled. The Witcher 3 is next on the list. Let's see what the performance is like with every single setting maxed out and ray tracing enabled. As we see, 40 FPS is just about what we're gonna get if we wanna run this game without any sort of upscaling or frame generation. And even though we're not quite getting the desired 60 FPS, the game still feels mostly responsive. But if you wanna actually play the game and have a good experience, I would suggest to either enable the LSS or turn frame generation on. Speaking of which, if we enable the LSS and set it to quality, we're gonna get an additional 15 FPS. Normally, NVIDIA's frame generation and the LSS on quality are pretty close in terms of how much FPS they provide. But in Witcher 3, it seems that frame generation is able to provide a lot more FPS than the LSS if we keep it on quality. In fact, in this particular scenario, frame gen was able to provide double the amount of FPS than the LSS which was quite impressive. But what happens if we enable both of them at the same time? Nearly 100 FPS. That is more than double the FPS that we got at the start. And if you guys are wondering if there are any frame drops, screen tearing or some kind of weird feeling while playing the game, let me tell you that there isn't. I honestly thought that if you enabled NVIDIA's frame generation, the game would start to feel weird, like it did with AMD's new frame gen especially if your original FPS was less than 60. But no, the game is honestly extremely smooth and enjoyable to play. If I had to guess whether or not all of these frames were real, I don't think I'd be able to tell, because it's honestly as real as it can get. Let's see what the performance is like in Hitman 3. Obviously, we have everything maxed out and ray tracing enabled. In this game, it seems that some areas are a lot more demanding than the other ones, hence double the amount of FPS in some areas. In the end, it averages out around 60 FPS. 
but let's see if enabling the LSS and setting it to quality will keep us above 60 FPS at all times. And it seems that it will. The LSS basically gave us an additional 30 FPS. Frame gen on the other hand nearly doubled it, which is a huge boost in FPS. But if you wanna have even more FPS than that, you can always enable both features at once, which will basically give you 200 FPS in some areas while keeping the lows around 100. The last game for today's tests will be Hogwarts Legacy. We're gonna max everything out here as well and turn ray tracing on. Right off the bat we are met with nearly 60 FPS, which is honestly not too bad. But let's see if we can improve that by enabling the LSS and setting it to quality. And it seems that we didn't really gain all that much FPS. Only 10 to be exact. Kinda underwhelming if you ask me. Hopefully frame gen can give us a bit more FPS. Which it will because we are already seeing an additional 30 FPS, as opposed to 10 that we gained from the LSS. These features are usually not this far apart in terms of how much FPS they generate, or at least that's what I thought. Nvidia's frame generation seems to be more consistent with every single game, where the LSS is more like hit or miss. Either way, enabling both of these features at once more than doubled our FPS, which is basically what happened with every single game. Before I tested all of these games, I didn't know just how good Nvidia's frame generation was. It's honestly amazing what tech can do nowadays. A decade from now, when 40 series RTX cards become old, a lot of people are gonna be really happy that they own them, because most people don't have the money to buy all of these modern GPUs for thousands of dollars. Imagine if you still had a GPU from 8 or 10 years ago, let's say a GTX 960 or something, and you couldn't afford a better one. That GPU gets around 30 FPS in Cyberpunk, which is not really playable. Now imagine what it would be like if you could use Nvidia's frame generation and the LSS on that GPU. You'd be playing games like Cyberpunk at a smooth 60 plus FPS on a decade old GPU. That is exactly what it'll be like in the future if you stay on a 40 series Nvidia GPU. Their GPUs are expensive, but as much as I hate to say it, they are kinda worth it. Their upscaling and frame generating features are just too good. But tell me what you think. Were you expecting these results and do you wish you had access to Nvidia's frame generation and the LSS on older GPUs? On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.